Okay, first of all, really, really sorry for the delay in this and the awkward sun angle. We're just gonna go with it. I know I've been missing for like three, four weeks. It might be, it might be a month now. I don't know. Um, coursework has been kicking my ass. It's not been pleasant. I haven't been motivated to record any videos whatsoever or even post the ones I already had recorded. So. I'm really sorry about that. Here's the good news. I read a book. Almost two, but I've got two chapters left in the other one. The book I read was Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Look at this gorgeous book. It's so pretty. And it's so pretty because I got the Illumicrate edition. I've never done this before, never got an Illumicrate edition before. I'm really kind of sad about that now because I wish I'd gotten the matching one to go with this because I actually love this edition. So that's sad. And it also came with artwork. The beautiful Cordelia, isn't that gorgeous? You just know it's going up on my wall somewhere. Where is it? Good question. I think by my desk, probably. A package arrived today, and I am so excited. This could be two things, both of which are essentially the same, but I don't know which it is. At least I think it's that. If it's something else, then I'm going to be completely bamboozled. So, it's a question of whether it's a Lumicrate or Lit Joy. I'm thinking a Lumicrate because Lit Joy has not told me it's shipped yet, which frustrates me, but whatever. It's a Lumicrate, and look, it comes in a cute little satchel. I thought it came in a box, but okay. Let's get it out, let's get it out, let's get it out! Where are you? Come on, please. If you could move, that would be wonderful. It's here. It's Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, the Illumicrate Edition. And the beautiful Cordelia. This is the free artwork they said was coming with it. Um, by Lucy Herondale. The art work is by someone on Instagram. I don't actually know who that is. And the book is signed. <sighs> is there anything else special about the book? I mean, it has sprayed edges. That's something. It's got these, but I think those might be in every first edition. I'm not sure. So I think that's it. The only downs I <laughs> I love that. Secrets consume even the truest love. The only downside to this is I do not have the first book, so this is going to match exactly none of the books that I own. I have a couple of water stones, but this is my first Illumicrate, so I'm like, it's not going to match anything. But it is stunning. Look at that. Though I do have questions. Why is this the symbol that we went with? Because there's a reason why I didn't get the Waterstones edition. And that's because this repeated. This is so pretty. <laughs> Can't wait to read it. No spoilers, please. Hi, guys. Okay, so I realized that I never fulfilled on a promise that I said I would do. Now, for one of them, I couldn't do it because it wasn't a box, so there was nothing exciting. There is a clip that I will put in the video that this will be in that you can watch, but mm. but I promised that when I special ordered Chain of Iron, I would do an unboxing. I got too excited and I opened it without filming it, sorry. 
um and i did do a tiktok one but this will be a bit long longer so without further ado this is my chain of iron lip joy crate box and it is the limited pre-order special edition and i love this box let me just say that going in i adored everything in it so we open it up and two things stand out to me. One, this is gorgeous. Two, there's a little wax seal. There's a wax seal. And you can't tell in that light, but there's a rune in the wax. So I very carefully got scissors so I didn't damage the wax seal because I like it too much. Okay. So, inside the box itself, as promised, so, there was this very shiny, pretty thing, and this is just telling you all about the stuff that's in it, and saying that Litjoy is hoping next year to do a box for Chain of Thorns, which will be the final book in the um, Last Hour series, and I really hope they do, and I hope I get to purchase it. I also hope that they re-release the first book sleeve so I can get it and all my books can match because I think it's stunning. It also came with what they call a book plate, but I believe it's just a sticker of Cassie Clare's signature and it's smudged. So this tells me that this is genuinely her signature. She signed it herself. Isn't that wonderful? I have Cassie's signature. Okay. This is a letter from Matthew to James, but no, it's not that letter. The red chain of iron, you know what I mean? It's not that letter. It's a much nicer letter. Very fancy. Uh, it's really cute. He starts it going, my dear James, and he signs it yours very, very, very sincerely, Matthew Fairchild. I won't tell you what's in it, because that is exclusive for people who bought the thing, and also we'd be here far too long, and also, if you can tell by my voice, I'm, I'm sick. I've been sick for the past week, and I'm still getting over it. I'm much better, still getting over it. Then they sent this gorgeous artwork print by Sasha Coleman at... Sasha C underscore art um, and it matches the one they sent in their first box of James and this is of Cordelia Castes and isn't she so beautiful? She's so beautiful. Oh I love Cordelia so when I opened when I found out in this box there's gonna be a print of her I got so happy because I love her. Oh, and then we have the big ticket item, the book and the book sleeve itself. Oh. <coughs> My throat won't let me do that right. Look at this. We have the blackthorn necklace on the spine. We have this rune, which I honestly don't know what rune this is. On the front, I think it's the marriage rune. You know, I really wish they told you in the cheat sheet which rune it was. That's the rune that's in the wax steel sticker. And on the back, we have quotes. And it's so shiny. Um, and I'll read you the quote. Because I find it rather poignant. Do the Nephilim understand what is happening to them? It has been thousands of years since the princes of hell walked on the earth. The Nephilim are descended from angels, but to them the angels are fairy tales, a power that exists but is never seen. It is not wise to forget to believe. <sighs> Chills. Um, I'm in my book. <laughs> and then, this is the book. It's a simple thing. Sadly, the dust jacket is not stuck to it, so I may end up getting a third version of this book, which has the jacket stuck to it, because 
I like those versions. But it's still extremely pretty. It's so pretty. But the bit that did it for me in this box was the book sleeve. Like, I'm sorry, I know a lot of people rave about only McCrate editions. Um, they're nice. Yeah. This. This is everything. This is gorgeous. Oh, my precious. Alright, so let me tell you who designed this, first of all. Um, the slipcase was designed by at pink tofu underscore art yep and i'm really hoping they they have an option on their website for you to vote to get the chain of gold one re-released so i really hope enough people vote so i can get the chain of gold one and match it to this stunning one i've seen the chain of gold one and it has cortana So pretty, I love it. It's so pretty. <sighs> I could see you stroking it all day, just going, My precious, my precious. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay, so that was it in the box. It really wasn't that exciting, but it was the first box subscription box i ever got for a book well it's not really a subscription box but you know close enough i also ordered the illumicrate edition and this art print came with it if i didn't already show you it so i'm keeping it and the little pouch it came in nice and safe in this box with the other stuff And I am, because I'm going to keep this box, and this is going to go on my shelf. Mm. Okay. Bye, guys. Uh, back to the video. <laughs> but, yeah, I read it. I read it. In one day, because this is arrived yesterday. My thoughts. Oh. Okay, warning. This book has made me so frustrated. I have never been more frustrated with a book in my entire life. That includes Randley Baratheon. And whichever one he died in. The Clash of Kings. So much frustration. Okay, it's not because this was a bad book. This book is 5 out of 5 stars, brilliantly written, really well crafted, twists I did not see coming. But... Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers! Yeah, but I'm not kidding. In the last 200 pages, every single ship got decimated, so no couples are together. Except, you know, like... The ones that are already married. Don't worry, Will and Tessa are still together, it's fine, they're fabulous. But all the teenage couples, nope. Not together. Not one bit. And you're like, why? What did I do to deserve this? Why, Cassie, why? <laughs> I literally screamed in frustration. Twice. just finished it and in all my years of reading i have never been more frustrated with a book like it's five out of five extremely well written but you managed to decimate every single couple hey, if you want go into this expecting lots of lovely romance lower those expectations Secrets consume even the truest love. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth?
And it's not even just talking about romantic love. I am so frustrated, I literally have a tension headache. Cassandra Claire, how do you do this? Mm. Yeah. Alright, full video soon. <laughs> Alright, Chain of Iron is the second book in the um, Last Hour series. And yeah, so read Chain of Gold first. Alright, in we go, in we go, in we go. Where's my notes? Oh, I managed to fix the cover of this book, which is good. Okay. Alright. So, to start off with the prologue, reveals that someone, or rather something, has a human body again and feels weak. It feeds off death energy and has an adamantus knife and considers James and Cordelia to be enemies. Yeah, so the prologue starts off with this dude, who I called the creeper in the end, stabbing someone. And adamantus, for those who don't remember, is, you know, it's a substance that the Iron Sisters work with, the substance that the Shadowhunters make all their weapons out of. And then, okay, then we continue on and we find out Lucy is still working with Grace and they've exhausted all kid-friendly attempts, I guess. And next up is necromancy! Um, and you're like, what? And apparently they keep getting the ingredients from Christopher and Grace reveals that she's an avid reader, like she gets insulted at one point because it's like, I'm not stupid. Just because I didn't go to school with you doesn't mean I... Just because I didn't get tutored doesn't mean I'm stupid. I read a lot. So it's like, okay, girl, calm down. And then we've got... The wedding is happening, like, the next day. And we're with Cordelia, and her dad is supposed to have come home already. He's five days late. He's supposed to have recovered, been cured from his alcoholism at this place, I can't remember the name, but he's five days late. And Matthew, it comes together because she thinks she's going to this fancy party with James, and it turns out he's just there to escort her to her bachelorette party, which is at the Hell Ruel, uh, with Lucy and Anna, and yes, and Matthew, um, you takes off because he's going to the bachelor party obviously for James and then there's a freaking Faye there who's like trying to be all manipulative and saying go see Waylon Smith I know you're going into marriage where he just doesn't love you and you're like shut up and go away and then oh he does have the best dynamic between Anna Lucy and Cordelia and it's mm, so wonderful and a vampire asks them to dance, and Lucy says, Oh, me first! I have so many questions! And just starts firing off rapid-fire questions, and you can tell she's doing it for the story she's working on. And you're like, Lucy? <laughs> okay. And the poor vampire, apparently his name's Edwin, is just like, I just really wanted to dance! <laughs> I didn't expect an inquisition. Um, and then, meanwhile, at the boys' bachelor party, which is, of course, at the Devil Tavern. The reverse mermaid. <laughs> Matthew Hyde, a reverse mermaid. That's exactly what you're thinking of. Human legs, fish body. And the guys are just like, uh. But all the downworlders there are going like, woo! They're really excited. And then there's Pickles, the Kelpie, who like swims in a vat of vodka. For those of you who don't know what a Kelpie is, it's a water horse, okay? Um, not like the movie, it looks like a horse, but like there's reeds in the hair and it's green. And honestly, when the devil, like, the devil's patrons them figure out that James is getting married, they all buy him drinks and come over to congratulate him, and that's when James realizes, like, I've known first of these people my whole life, they're, they're my friends. And you're like, yes, downworld the community for the win! 
Um, and then it's just the Merry Thieves hanging out in their special room in the tavern because they realize, yeah, this is not working. Um, and James kind of shadows. It's like he sees a strange world. And yeah. It's the first time this has happened like a number of months. Like they thought it had stopped happening, but it came back. It was like, what the heck? And Matthew is bitter about the fact that he's getting married. He's like, you know, you can still call up the wedding. He's like, well, maybe you should have told me to do that, but not the night before it. He's like, timing, dude. And Thomas is responsible as usual. And Christopher is adorable. Alright, I just have to say, the brightest spot for me in this entire book was Christopher, and we need more of him. Cassie, please give me more Christopher in the next book. <gasps> He's underused, I swear. And please take the bracelet off. A summary of me in the entire book. Take the bracelet off, take the bracelet off, take the bracelet off, take it off! <sighs> and then we find Jessie still goes to the mount. Now hanging out with Lucy. And then we have a flashback and we find out that Tatiana was abusive to Grace. Why am I not surprised? Um, and Grace doesn't remember her parents that much, weirdly. Even though she was adopted when she was seven, so I'm like... <sighs> and Jesse trained Grace in secret because Jesse did not agree with what his mother was doing. And wanted to be a shadow hunter, so she he trained himself in secret, and then tra and then trained Grace when she asked. And then it's like, did he really die from a rune? Because it doesn't make much sense. Because he seemed strong. Like everyone talks about how he's a sickly child, but in that flashback, I'm like, you seem strong, dude. Did you really just die from a rune? And then Elias comes back with a scabbard. Yeah, he's back. So, and then it's like the wedding. It's the wedding day, I think. Yeah, and they keep mentioning that there's going to be a divorce in a year's time. I'm like, stop mentioning it. Stop mentioning this. My Jordelia shipping heart cannot take this. And then um, a woman from Rome is introduced as Philomena D'Angelo. And I'm like, ooh. And that explains the dedication in the beginning because she's like, she writes to Rick Riordan and is like, poor Rick Riordan, thanks for letting me use the noble name D'Angelo. <sighs> then Grace wanted to remove the bracelet, but Tatiana possessed someone and stopped her. And I'm like, you know, Grace, as much as it's great that you want to remove your bracelet, you could have tried before now to do that. Like, the day of the wedding is a bit late. Um, and Grace is like, look, just let me remove it. He's gonna break it. He's gonna break it. And Tatiana won't hear it. And she's like, there's no way he could break the bracelet. There's no way. And I'm like, maybe Cortana could do it. And then Christopher and Grace interact because, like, the woman that was being possessed faints and Christopher comes in and is like, I was sent to escort you to the wedding hall. It's like, you okay? You okay, right? And then Bridget gets the poor maid that was possessed out of there and, yep. Christopher escorts Grace. There's no influencing, enchanting in that scene, which is good. Because the minute she starts to enchant Christopher, ugh. the wedding was so beautiful. Um, Matthew was James's Sugnus, and Lucy was Cordelia's, and it was just oh, it was so sweet. And then Elias gets drunk at the wedding reception, and you're just like, this man is useless. You couldn't stay sober for one night. And then, um, Adrian is, uh, uh, Adrian? I, I, didn't, I can't pronounce that name. I'm just gonna be saying Adrian. Aradni, that's it. Aradni keeps, like, wanting to talk to Anna, and you're like, oh my gosh, she really loves Anna. Anna, talk to her for the love of sanity. Um, and 
and I keep just like another mantra for me reading this book is like please let James' love for Daisy free him please let James' love for Daisy free him and then Alistair comes over to speak to Cordelia and he really is trying to make things better but he's really bad at it and the others won't hear of it because you know they're And Magnus pops up, and I'm like, Magnus, darling, good to see you, darling. <sighs> and then we go to the house, which James completely, like, he bought, he set up, he did all of the inside interior decorating, and it is gorgeous, beautiful. Oh, I want that house. Oh, the study of love. And then they play chess, because it turns out that's like Cordelia's favourite game and the rule is whoever wins gets to ask the person a question um, and the other person has to answer. And they don't just play chess, they do other games too, but generally only board games. <sighs> and then there's a scene where like they go up and you think, oh they're gonna have to share a bed, they're gonna have to share a bed. But no, this is still like the 1800s. 1900s, I forget which one. And they don't have to share a bed because it's still fairly normal in those times for a man and a, a husband and wife not to share the same room but rather have two bedrooms adjoined by one bathroom. So they do that. And then Cord Cordelia can't remove the dress herself, so she has to ask James to do it. And James wants her, like, mm. he does, you can feel it. Cordelia is completely oblivious and does not realise, and you're like, babe, he wants you. Also, they have to put a second rune onto each other at some point, and they never do, which is not good. To, like, you know, officialise the marriage. And then we see the creeper, and I was like, is this Belias? From the prologue, is watching them, and I'm like, he, that's why I called him a creeper, because he's creeping. He's creepy. And then there's a party for Ronesmond, whatever her last name is, because she's also getting married. And there's a real joke of it running through that she's getting married to prove that she's not the only one. The Cordelia isn't the only one who can get married. And we find out someone died on patrol. You know, not their neutral, they are shadow hunters. And apparently the married women are boring. But we see a glimpse of Eugenia Lightwood because she's back in London. And I'm like, I want to know Eugenia Lightwood. Give me Eugenia Lightwood. Tell me about her. But we only saw a glimpse of her and I'm like, Ugh. Like Rosamund chases her off and I'm like, Rosamund, I need my Lightwood girls. Bring her back. Have I mentioned I adore Matthew? Because Matthew saves her and is like, let's go dancing. <sighs> and apparently, Charles stuffed up in Paris, and so Wesse is in his sorted. And I'm like, yeah, Charles, you're not as great as you think you are. And then Cordelia's like, says to Matthew, you would have been better. And I'm like, honestly, to deal with vampires, Matthew probably would have been better. He's a lot more charming, and it's a lot more respect for downward. And then I think James was jealous because he demands the next dance with his wife, even though technically it's not appropriate. I, it's not done. I don't really know why. I know nothing. Um, we have another flashback. I'm still not convinced Jesse died as a result of a rune. Tatiana is crazy and Grace is lonely. Because it was just her and her mother and her mother, well, is crazy. So, yeah, fair enough. So then, um, Jordelia leaves the party, but not before Grace arrives, um, and she gets the new, like, the husband-to-be to dance with her, as she does, and then she warns James about something, and you're like, what? Eh, the, yeah. And then Lucy heads home, and it's, she dances with Jesse, like, the ghost in the snow, and she loves him and it's also tragic and confusing because I'm like 
according to the family tree, you get married, and that's how we get, like, the million black thorns we get in the other series. But he's dead, and I really don't want you to do necromancy to bring him back, because that cannot end well. Okay? There's a reason why it's forbidden. Then Cicely and Gideon are going to fill in for Wessa while they're away, so they're staying at the Institute. Um, James is intensely attracted to Daisy and loves being married to her. Like, honestly, they their marriage works so well. I'm like, if you just knew that you loved each other, this would be perfect. Like I said, they have games every night, and he looks forward to having breakfast with her in the morning and telling her what he was thinking about during the night. It's just... Mm. Get that bracelet off! Like, he's found every time he tries to take the bracelet off, he gets distracted and forgets to do it. Or a couple of times he's tried and it hasn't worked. Like, it won't come off, so he's like, oh, I need to get, like, a, kni a knife or something. And he keeps getting headaches. And then Creeper kills another Shadow Hunter, and it seems like he stole a Swiftness rune, and you're like, well, that's new. Um, James is having dreams of the murders. You're like, that's, that can't be good. Um, Lucy got ingredients from Kit, which is the nickname for Christopher, and I'm like, Ooh, Kit, I love that, and trained with Daisy. Um, and then Matthew argues with his parents about his drinking because he's he calls them boring and I'm like Matthew your drinking is a problem stop doing it please don't insult your parents they're fabulous um Kit makes a gun that only James can fire so like it fires like angelic bullets but only James can fire it, and I'm like, ooh, a gun. Because we haven't seen that weapon before, so I'm like, <laughs> cool. Um, an awkward dinner at the cast desk. <laughs> Poor Alistair. <laughs> so, like, um, Jordelia's dinner with the fam, and it just, it goes interestingly you know because elias keeps talking big about the fact that he killed a legendary demon and alistair's pointing out stuff and yeah, it's just it's awkward all around you <laughs> realize what alistair's been going through all these years and he's just he's getting to the point where he's so dumb with his father like so dumb um lucy and jesse oh so tragic apparently he loves her too and Anna throws a party, and you know, naturally, it's fabulous. Um, James, take off that bracelet. And Creeper goes after a girl, and she fights back, because he's like, I'm stronger now, I can choose what prey I want, and then it's like, as he's fighting her, he's like, I made a terrible decision. <laughs> and then we find out Fleomina is dead, and I'm like, really? We just got her. And I liked her, and she seemed pretty cool. And James dreamt about it, and you're like, mmm. And Georgiela and share, like, a really intense moment, because he's, like, flailing in bed and wrestling with the sheets, and so Cordelia has to get on top of him to, like, hold him down and be like, James, wake up! And he wakes up, and he's like, Daisy? Ugh. And then Matthew's moving out of home? Isn't he like 17? I swear he's not old enough. Like, he's not old enough to sit in on the enclave meetings. He's not old enough to move out. That's my opinion. And then Lucy speaks to Fleomina's ghost. And the others are there. They had to, like, track her down. And Lucy got the information from another ghost who asked her to command him to forget. Which was weird. It doesn't sound good. But, hmm. So they, they go to this random, random factory and her scarf is there and they speak to her. And she thinks Cordelia could have saved her. She cannot teleport. Just because she's got Cortana does not mean she cannot teleport. She wasn't even at the party. So just shush. And 
she keep and she keeps saying he took my strength and you're like okay and james shoots an obvious demon that was just there same thing cordelia it's fabulous um tatiana gave gross her gift like her enchantment over regular men and they practiced in paris and this is where like the line my mother's blade came from this is when she started talking to her about being that and then Cortana is burning Cordelia, like, in that fight with the Oribus demon, she was forced to drop the blade. And you're like, this can't be good. No, Cortana, snap out of it. You were fabulous for Emma. Why are you treating Cordelia this way? So, the Sco and then the Scooby gang researches because they're trying to figure out what's going on. I officially hate Elias. Later on, he stops by and asks James for money. Not just a little bit of money. Five thousand pounds. The heck, dude? No one has five thousand pounds in the 1800s? No. Mm. So, yeah. James tells him what's what. And it's like, no. Can't do it. Uh, Lucy and Grace deal with Malcolm. To get to try and find information about bringing Jesse back and he actually tries to warn Lucy about the enchantment that Grace is capable of and Lucy's just like yeah I know you don't know um, and apparently Anna and Ariadne are sex friends and I'm like well it's something but not what I was hoping for oh yeah I forgot in that reception party for the other couple they got it on in a closet <sighs> She smoothed that out. And I guess I'm using she, her pronouns because that's what they use in the book. Um, the creeper has learned his lesson is only going after weak prey and goes after, actually goes after Elias. And again, James sees it. And then they go and see the body and Cordelia notices his voyance rune is missing and is like, so she asks the silent brother to check it out and see if any of the other bodies are missing rooms. Um, James, like, see if um, Fleomina's body is missing her strength rune. Um, Alistair proves that he's a fantastic brother and basically tells, one, James did the right thing about not giving the money to their father. And that it was not anything noble, it was to pay off his own debts due to, that he'd got due to drinking and gambling. And two, not to give him Cortana because she is the wielder. Um, and it turns out, in a flashback, Jace was actually immune to Grace's gift. And it is the bracelet that's doing it. Re the regular gift that she has does not work on him. It's the bracelet that's making it work. Um... Cordelia and Matthew hatch a plan. The plan is to um, go to see Waylon the Smith because they heard about this barrow and they think, okay, it sounds like a good idea. And Matthew finally tells her about the truth about what he's done. Like, the bit about how Alistair's... It wasn't his, but the rumour Alistair told about his mother and Gideon got to him and he bought a truth potion from Shadow Market and that caused his mother to lose the baby and he's blamed himself ever since and Cordelia's like no you have to tell them they'll forgive you they love you and he's like I can't tell them and I'm like okay um Lucy tries to command Jesse to live that does not go well um Thomas sees Alistair and has decided to hunt down the creeper so he sees Alistair to provide comfort over what happened to father and it's very intense and they're like staring at each other and it's like But then he's decided he's gonna hunt down the creeper by himself and I'm like Thomas we never go off by ourselves <sighs> Then Tatiana or disgrace to see James and I'm like Bish stop Tatiana has got to go how are you not dead yet? Because, yeah, they have this weird communication device that means they can talk to each other while she's at the stupid citadel. 
And then, um, Matthew continues to flirt with everyone and continues to drink. And I just keep going, please don't be in love with Daisy. Please don't be in love with Daisy. Please don't be in love with Daisy. Um, and Grace forces James to kiss her, but he kisses her like she's Daisy. I know. And during that process, like, afterwards, he, like, punches the wall and the bracelet gets cracked. And you're like, we're so close, baby. We're so close. And then we find Waylon the Smith. And in this scene, I was so excited. I was just like, oh, he's not a shadow hunter. He's near God. What is he? And heals Cortana and makes Cordelia's paladin and is talking about Arthur and Excalibur. And I'm just like, yes, 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 yes. yes. And then Jesse protects Lucy from a ghost who wants her to command her to do something, and I'm like, this is why we don't trust strange ghosts. <sighs> and Grace tells Malcolm the truth about Annabelle. So that's how we found out. Thanks, Grace. Thanks. Um turns out Tatiana bought Grace. Like that isn't horrible. Um Lucy enlists Anna's help to with the necromancy thing and working with Malcolm and all that business. Which well, she doesn't specifically tell her just for the next necromancy thing. Tells her it she just needs information about Jess. The Scooby gang gets together to prove James is innocent, so Cordelia has to watch him with Cortana and he's tied to a bag and she's like he tells her about kissing Grace and she's like, Okay, you owe me Kiss me, I want to practice. And it is intense. <sighs> I thought that bracelet was so close to breaking then. <sighs> and free yourself, James, I've written. Thomas is being stupid because he goes charging off by himself again and you're like, hmm. And James is proven innocent. I'm like, well, we already knew this. The Inquisitor thinks Thomas killed them because he was found with Lillian Highsmith's body and Lillian said the killer was dead, died in his prime, his wife wept and when I read that I was like, Blackthorn? Is it Tatiana's husband? And then Alistair has been following Thomas and is willing to swear by mortal sword he didn't do it. It's like he's basically been stalking Thomas but only when he goes out at night because he's like he shouldn't be alone and he's refusing to take help so I'm going to follow him and I'm like Alistair honestly in this book you've won me over man and I am so happy for it Thomas found some of and found some animus object and the Scooby gang head to the shadow market to figure out what it might be it turns out Christopher haggles like nobody's business and is like a regular at the shadow market like when he walks in all the others are getting glared at and getting glares of mistrust, but the rest go, Mr. Lightwood, Mr. Lightwood, I've got the thing you were asking for last week. And it's like, my baby. Like I said, I love Christopher. And yes, it's revealed Matthew is in love with Cordelia. I hate love triangles. Um, and Lucy promises Malcolm she's going to summon Annabelle if he helps her. And I'm like, well, this is going to end poorly. Thanks, Lucy. This is going to be some irony. And then Alistair and Thomas talk. Like, well, because... So when he said he'd swear by mortal sword, they had to be held overnight until the mortal sword could get there in the morning. And, yeah, so they're, they're locked in the sanctuary and, like, there's beddings and stuff and mattresses have been bought and then they're talking and it gets really like intense and sweet where Alistair's like I wanted to hate you for my own sake but I never could <sighs> I thought you you were like me and Alistair's like no I'm nothing like you you're the kindest sweetest person on this I've ever met and he's like no that you and then he kisses him and it's like and then they spend the whole night making out, and I'm like, ah! Yes! <laughs> the scene was glorious. And then Magnus is here at the Shadow Market, and I'm like, Magnus! I don't know why you're here, but I'm happy. 
and turns out the Animus is demonic. And it's time for James to spy on his grandfather, Belial. Return the favour. Um, Matthew needs to stop drinking. He and James get into an argument and Matthew breaks the bottle in his hand. And when Cordelia comes rushing over to them after that, she she literally thinks to herself, she, he reminds me of my dad. And I'm like, that's not a good thing, sweetheart. Matthew, stop. And then there's an epic fight in the Golden Square, and then it gets strange because the demons are, like, afraid of Cordelia, and they fear the paladins, and I'm like, what is Wayland? Why would the demons be afraid? Is he, like, an angel? <laughs> then, as Lucy pointed out, everyone is keeping secrets. No one, no, no one 100% knows everything that is going on, because everyone... It's keeping freaking secrets. This is not how we work. It's like the tagline set. Secrets consume even the truest love. And it's not just talking about romantic. Then we have a flashback to the bracelet. Um, and then Grace breaks in to the um, Fairchild Manor to get an ingredient. She sees Christopher. Christopher, being the sweet honey that he is, is like, of course you should be here. You're Charles' betrothed. And he's like, yes, exactly. It's a surprise for Charles. And then they have, like, a really nice conversation about science. And it's really, really nice. And it turns out that Grace likes that she, that Christopher speaks to her like she's an equal. Like, doesn't speak down to her or anything like that. And it turns out. Christopher likes her. Like, they, the, the conversation they had in the car carriage, we hear about in the first book. We actually hear both perspectives, and they both really enjoyed that conversation. And Christopher's thinking, oh, maybe we, next time she's here, I could ask if we could team up and be like the Curies. And I'm like, you were so sweet. And that, that whole conversation made me like Grace. How did this happen? I'm not meant to like her, but that conversation did it. Um, Alistair and Thomas continue to make out, and I'm like, it's not the best place, boys, but, you know, go nuts. Uh, turns out Tatiana got Emmanuel that uh, warlock from the first book who died to play spells on Jesse, which may have killed him, like, and then Matthew, and I put question mark here, took the pithos back, that's what they called the adamantus thing they found. And I was like, this is weird. Why is Matthew here? Like, it didn't feel right to me as I was reading it. Um, and Magnus travels with James to Edom, and they confront, con confront Belial, and it turns out two more stabs from Cortana, and he's finished. Because Cortana is made from the feather of the Archangel Michael, who first sent him down into the pit. And I'm like, ooh. And then um, Cordelia saves James and gets him out of there. And Belial also managed to get Magnus out of there. And it was just like, okay. And he drops the gun in there. And I'm like, no, don't drop the new weapon. The weapon is so good. Um, and then when she saves him, he's like, he's, my, he's not yours. He's mine. He's mine. And then they proceed to make out. And the bracelet breaks and i'm like yes and then james passes out and i'm like really um grace really loves jesse i will give her this she really loves her brother everything she's doing and everything she's done is for her brother's sake her mother has manipulated into her thinking it is so and then Lucy summoned Emmanuel. It did not go well. He got, like, ripped apart, and Jessamine was there. I was horrified that she could command ghosts this way. It was just, it was all very strange. And the questioning goes ahead, and it's hilarious, because Will does it. <laughs> and then it turns out the Institute, and, yeah, it goes, and they're free to go and whatever, and then it turns out the Institute is under attack. And I'm like, what? And 
then we go to Lucy and she's realized something and she grabs the black thorn, th thorn sword and is about to attack Jessie and you're like, what? And then she gets knocked out and I'm like, no, what did she realize? What's going on? And then it turns out freaking Leviathan, one of the princes of hell, is attacking the Institute. And as you can imagine, Leviathan, it's the name of like a sea monster. He's sending up all his tentacles to do his stuff. And... It gets intense because at one point Gideon gets grabbed and I kid you not, I gasped. I was like, no! And then it immediately switches scenes and I'm like, no, it's Gideon, okay! And then um, Charles is injured because we jump and Charles is injured and Cordelia and Matthew and James find him and you're like, what's, what? But he's not dead. He's just injured. Matthew rushes over to him and they both like freeze and you're like, what's going on? And then it turns out Belial was the dude doing all the stabbings, but was possessing Jesse's body, and that's why we only saw Jesse's ghost at night. And you're like, the heck is going on? And then, and then it's, and then we think it's a ghost of Lillian Hightower turns up, and she says some rather rude thing to Cordelia, and James is just like, I don't care if you are a ghost, you don't get to speak to her that way. And then. She shapeshifts, and you see Magnus, and you're like, what? No. And then it's revealed to be Lilith. Lilith was Magnus. And I was like, no! No, you did not just do that. No! Um, and then Lucy persuades Grace to get Malcolm, while also explaining that the result of the protection spells that Emmanuel put on Jesse meant that at peace of Belial was put inside him, which is what has allowed Belial to, um, to possess his body right now, and it's also why Jesse died, because since there was something inherently demonic inside of him, he couldn't bear the runes, and that's why he died. So it's his mother's fault! I knew it! And, yeah. And then, and then it turns out Cordelia is sworn to Lilith, because it's not bad enough that Lilith impersonated Magnus. She impersonated Wayland the Smith, and I'm like, the F. Back off! And then she gets Cordelia to attack everyone, but Cordelia's fighting it because Lucy turns up and is stopping everything. It's like, Dodo, Jesse, and everyone's like, what is going on? And it's just... And then... Jane, and then it's like, they need to get Lilith out of there because she's using Cordelia like a puppet and Belial starts working with them because he realizes this is not going well. And so he throws the gun to James who shoots her and she explodes into a bunch of owls and you're like, yes, but now we have to deal with him. But Lucy manages to get Jesse to expunge Belial and because Charles, and then after he's been expunged and... This really trippy scene happened where Cordelia is, like, in James's arms and she, he brings her into the Shadow World to stab Belial for a second time. When that happens, the attack on the Institute stops, Leviathan can no longer get through, and... It was a, it was a very tense couple of pages, it was very tense. And then Charles is okay, it's okay. Malcolm turns up, and they go to the Institute, and James has to lie like a pro, because, like, he basically tells them the truth, but he leaves out the fact that he was having dreams, and that Cordelia is now a paladin, and possibly something else. And obviously they don't know all that Lucy's been up to, because Lucy has told no one. <sighs> and then I'm like, can no couple be happy? Because Alistair chooses this point to tell Thomas, no, we can't be together, and I'm like, why?! And then the Scooby gang knows all except for what Lucy's been up to, because like I said, she's not telling anyone anything, and to make matters worse, she didn't even go with them, she stayed at the Institute. <sighs> and then, it, then, it, ugh. And then Lucy goes to see his body, and she manages to bring him back to life! And I'm like, what?! 
And then she passes out, and I'm just beyond confused as to what on earth just happened, and I need answers. <laughs> and then Anna and Aradne also broke up the thing because she's like, because Aradne's like, no, you don't even want to love me. It's not that, that you don't right now, it's just you never want to, and I can't keep hurting myself this way. So she goes off, you know, and then, like, then Anna. So she doesn't see Anna just break down crying because the reason she's doing this is to try and not hurt, get hurt again. And I'm like, everything is just unbearably tragic. We also find that Ariadne's um, real name, or her birth name at least, was Kamala. And I'm like, why'd they make a change? Kamala's a beautiful name. Because, you know, she's from India, but she got adopted when her parents died. And... She explains that they made her change, like, everything about her. I love her, but it's like they're trying to whitewash her, almost. <sighs> okay. And then James is finally ready to tell Cordelia the truth. The truth that he never loved Grace, that he's always loved Cordelia. Because we actually found out, like, early on, like, after the Scarlet Fever incident, before the bracelet got put on... He was in love with Cordelia and kept talking about it to Grace and it wasn't until after the bracelet was put on that he started to have feelings for Grace and so he's always loved Cordelia he's always loved Daisy and you're like mm -hmm. and then Grace turns up and James literally says the worst thing possible and Cordelia only hears the first part of it and then runs off without hearing the rest so she doesn't hear him telling Grace off yelling at her for what she did to him like yelling at her for the bracelet and explaining like that he never loved her and that they're not friends they're not anything because she ran off before she could hear it and Grace is like I'm ready to face my punishment he's like good stay here with um Effie our house girl I will send someone along to question you. So, Grace is at the house and is apparently waiting to be taken to the clave to be questioned. And I'm like, okay. And then he goes running off after Cordelia. And Cordelia ran off to Matthew. And Matthew, and it's like, she's crying and she's explaining everything. And Matthew's like, look, I got a great idea. Let's get out of here. Let's go to Paris. And I'm like, what? And she's like, okay, but only if you promise not to drink. And I'm like, this is a recipe for disaster. And it turns out Matthew left a letter explaining to um, James where they've gone and that he's actually in love with Cordelia and to just let them be, be in Paris. And James is like, no, this can't be happening. And he goes running after them. He's going to the train. And then while this was happening, Jessamine warned Will about Lucy, and they get there and they realise Lucy and Jesse are missing, and you're like, what did, where have they gone? And so Will has gone chasing after James, because he needs James to find Lucy, and so he grabs him before he can get on the train, and he's like, no, you can't leave, and he's like, I need to go, and he's like, no, you can't, and I'm like, just let him get on the train and tell them the truth, please! But no. And that's where it ends. Um, I'm going to get the epilogue and then it's Tatian and Belial again plus an iron's tomb key equals what? And then um, we had a bonus story of Jim and Magnus at the Spiral Labyrinth fighting book monsters. And that's where we ended. And I'm just like... So literally no couple is together. Now, I'm not worried about Matthew and Cordelia getting together, because she kept friend-zoning him in this entire book. But I'm just like, Matthew, what is your plan here? Because while you're a drunk, you can definitely not date Cordelia. She went and threw enough of that with her father. Stop it. And also, why have you two gone off to Paris during this time, okay? We, Belial is still out there trying to do stuff, and you decide going to Paris is a good idea right now. No! It's not a good idea, and now Lucy is missing, and you won't even be there for them to tell you, so you can't help with the search. She's meant to be your parabatai, Cordelia, and you've abandoned her. So, I'm just really mad, and they should not have gone to Paris. 
I have no idea what's happening in the next book. Apparently it's set a week after, and we're not getting it until March next year, and I am on tenterhooks. I just... It was a very good book, okay, but very emotionally draining. I had a literal tension headache after it. And none of the couples are together anymore, and I'm very sad. Also, I am quoting, like, Paul and Banana's books for this, but with the family tree, I'm treating it as my holy grail until proven otherwise. The only thing keeping me going. Alright, I'm gonna end this video here. We've already gone for almost 50 minutes. <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed this really nonsensical thing. If you did, like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys!